My name is uh, Stephen Murray and my supervisor is uh, Chris Power. Um, my co-supervisors are Aaron Robotham, um, Lister Stavely-Smith and Simon Driver. So yeah, the title of uh, my project at the moment is testing the cold dark matter model with the halo mass function. So an outline of this talk is simply why do we want to test the cold dark matter model? Um, what is the halo mass function? Why is it useful for testing CDM and how am I going to go about this? So uh, many observations as you're all aware uh, have established the dominance of the cold dark matter model especially with uh, lambda CDM uh, fairly in, about in the last decade. Uh, however some observations suggest that cold dark matter does not give a complete accurate description on small scales about the size of galaxies. Um, so there's the core cusp problem um, where the cores of galaxies seem to be uh, less cusp-like than they're supposed to be um, given the simulations. Um, there's the faint galaxy problem as there's uh, less faint galaxies around uh, galaxies like our own uh, than they are uh, predicted to be and um, there are less dwarf galaxies uh, in voids than there are predicted to be. So these things suggest that there may be something extra to to CDM or perhaps there's uh, yeah, something that we need to introduce. So um, it has been proposed that warm dark matter may explain these small scale structures more accurately and so that's what we want to test. So that's WDM. Um, what is the halo mass function? So the halo mass function is really a measure of the number density of dark matter objects of any given mass. Uh, objects is defined in, in some way where they're, they're, they're sort of self-gravitationally bound. Um, so the simplest analytic equation is that of Press and Schechter. This is from about 1974, I think. Um, and it has this form, so the number um, of objects or the number density of objects per logarithmic interval in mass um, equals this equation here um, where this f of sigma term here is a function of the mass variance. So here's what it sort of looks like which is probably more useful. Um, basically well to note is that it depends on the mass and the mass variance. And the mass variance itself depends on the cosmology and the mass. So basically, in, in the end, it depends on the cosmology and the mass. Um, basically here, um, this actually looks a lot like the Schechter function that we saw earlier. But um, it, uh, in fact, it basically is. Um, but we see that at, the, at low masses, um, we see a, a lot more objects. At high masses, they drop off. Um, so basically, you've got a lot of little, little objects and, and a fewer big objects in the universe. So why is it useful for testing cold dark matter? So introducing warm dark matter corresponds to decreasing the mass of the dark matter particles. Uh, they move around quick, more quickly uh, but have uh, smaller mass than uh, the corresponding cold dark matter pa particles. So this has a measurable effect on the power spectrum which I could show you but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> The mass variance depends strongly on the power spectrum and therefore since the halo mass function depends on the mass variance, uh, the halo mass function uh, inevitably depends on the temperature of dark matter and this looks like this. So uh, this is I guess fairly extreme cases especially especially these guys, I plotted this uh, a couple of weeks ago. So um, here we've got uh, warm dark matter at 0.1 Kelvin, uh, sorry Kelvin killer electron volts. Um, that's at a redshift of zero. Um, and this is this, the cold dark matter model here. But you can see the, the biggest deviation is at the low mass end. And this is uh, kind of a problem um, for measuring it, which we'll go into in a sec. Um, the interpretation is, is quite simple. High temperature particles move around more and they smooth out the initial density perturbations within a certain scale. Um, so the small scale structure is wiped and sort of from the initial perturbations. And that's why it sort of decreases at these low mass end, at the low mass end. How am I going to go about testing this? Hopefully, um, the problem with testing cold dark matter with the halo mass function is that all the action happens at the low masses, which we just alluded to. Um, low mass groups in sort of observational surveys are more difficult to weigh. Um, there's just not enough statistical information there to get good 
results. Um, so what we need to do is be able to determine robust ways of measuring the mass of these low mass groups to reconstruct the observed Halley mass function and then obviously compare it to the theoretical one for a, uh, for a range of cosmologies. So to test the statistical methods, I'm going to use uh, state-of-the-art simulations uh, working with Chris Power. And um, so these simulations will be a controlled environment um, and they provide the backdrop to estimating the errors and the validity of the various mass, me mass measurement methods I'm going to use. So there's, there's many different uh, methods of estimating the mass of groups and clusters and things like that. Um, inevitably they get worse as you go to small masses but that control environment of the simulation gives me a, a good backdrop to estimating how good these methods are. Once I find a good one um, I will use that same method on observational data and compare the results. So these simulations, just finally, um, will be tailor-made for this task within this project and the observational data I'm going to be using is primarily from the Gamma survey and uh, so we'll be working in conjunction with those guys as well. Thank you very much.